today the third of a five-part series piecing together the puzzle that was ancient Pompeii. Its people, their lives, their dreams, all suddenly snuffed out by the most dreaded of natural cataclysms, the eruption of an incendiary volcano. Was it, as some preached at that time, a retribution of gods against Pompeii, the city of sin? An accident? Fate? Today's tale takes us 48 hours before the end. A story of men and women who have still very much to live for. Centurion, will you tell your prisoner, Marcus Rufus, that within an hour, an appeal will be made to the Senate to spare his life? I'm afraid it's too late for that now. What do you mean? He is innocent. You hear that? That lion will decide whether Marcus Rufus is innocent or guilty. <laughs> Today's story, Half Prophet, Half Fiend, is the third episode of that classic novel, The Last Days of Pompeii, especially dramatized from the book by Sir Edward Bulwer-Lytton, for Mystery Theater by Gerald Keane, and stars Russell Horton and Evie Juster. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Let me bring you up to date. The date, in fact, is August 22nd, 79 A.D. Yes, 1900 years ago. The place, Pompeii. The people, Arbaces, an Egyptian holy man who hardly practices what he preaches, who will turn to anything to gratify his desires. In this case, a young lady called Oriana. There is also Lydia, a blind girl who works as a servant in the house of Marcus Rufus, an Athenian architect. Although Lydia has never actually seen her employer, she loves him. And Marcus Rufus, where is he? In prison. That's where I, Marcus Aurelius Rufus, am at present. Until yesterday, I was a respected summer resident in Pompeii, with a house, property and as much work as I cared to take on. But today, here I am, in the house of the condemned, accused of murdering the brother of the woman I want to marry. Unbelievable. Just to begin. Oh, my dear, dear man, accept it. I cannot believe that Marcus, a good, honest Athenian, would put a knife in anyone. Dear me, dear me. You're a good man. You have no idea what goes on in the minds of certain people. What what can drive them to murder? Uh, Senator, are you saying that I am a simple... No, 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 I'm not. But you have to remember that Marcus Rufus, talented and well-off as he may be, is still a Greek. Ah. Marcus Rufus himself, out of pure friendship, decided to share his professional life with me and give me a new start. He would design houses, I would build them. Now, I ask you, is that the conniving of a criminal? A fresh start in life he was giving me, eh? Well, is it? Yeah, perhaps, 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 but he's still a Greek. Uh, you're adamant, then. Marcus will be judged in the arena this afternoon, eh? By a lion. Oh, actually, my friend, I recommended mercy, but it was the decree of the entire Senate. Oh, come now, if your friend is as innocent as you believe, no beast will touch him. Yes, I know. Uh, that's what the Romans believe. Well, don't you? How many condemned who defended themselves in this arena against a tiger or a lion? How many have lived to the next day? Well, very few. In fact, none. But uh, what does that prove? Merely that they all died because they were all guilty. Ah, ah, here come the first two gladiators. What's the matter, Marcus Rufus? 
You don't care for your breakfast? Tell me, Centurion. Do those poor souls who know they're going to be thrown to the lions eat a good breakfast? Eh, some do, some don't. Hmm. All this doesn't seem to bother you a great deal. Bringing meals to the condemned, selecting the lions. Bother me? <laughs> Look, I think that you're guilty of stabbing that young priest Abysidus and of killing him. You should be thankful I'm your god, not your judge. How can civilized people throw a citizen to the lions and believe that if the lion spares you, you're innocent, but if the lion does not, you're not only guilty, but... But eaten. Um, let's not talk about it. Well, and why not finish your breakfast, eh? You'll need your strength. Centurion... Do you know at what hour I am to enter the arena? Well, it's up to the senator to decide. I, I'll i be talking to him. I'm, I'm sure he regrets all this. The senator regrets? <laughs> what in the name of Jove does he know about death? I was caught in a web of circumstantial evidence. As I remembered that night... I realized some kind of drug must have been put into my wine cup, which, as we Greeks say, blew the mind apart. So, I ran from Diomed's party, and the next thing I knew, there was Epicides, brother of the woman I loved, lying dead at my feet in a cemetery, his blood on my dagger. Marcus! Marcus, it is I, Diomed! Diomed! Where are you? In the cell next to your... What? Okay, how are you, my boy? Wait, uh, just, just a moment. Uh, uh, are you really imprisoned here in the house of the condemned? Yes, under lock and key. I, I don't understand. Shh, oh. shh, shh. Now, I don't want the guard to hear. Stand near your high cell window and I'll stand by mine. And then we can talk without raising our voices. Oh, Marcus, I was getting nowhere with the senator up in the imperial box. So I went into the forum and I got myself arrested. I, I still don't understand, dear man. So I could get near enough to... This bulletin from the WWJ newsroom. A major fire is raging out of control at this hour at the Ford Motor Company plastics plant located in Milan. The Monroe County Fire Department classifies the blaze as being a nine alarm fire with nine different fire departments on the scene at this hour. Sources tell WWJ the blaze is reaching the critical... Leaving your cell door open. Eh? Yes. Good. Now, listen carefully. This is what you must do. I brought you your noon meal. You needn't have bothered. I told you, I don't think much of your prison chef. Ah, uh, don't be so picky. Here, let me untie your hands. I brought you a large beaker of excellent wine. Very nourishing. <laughs> well, have a sip. Go on, your hands are loose. Uh, mind you, no tricks. My head is still sore where you threw a bench at me yesterday. What kind of wine is it? Some cheap dregs? Mm, certainly not. The finest Falernian. You're joking. You taste it and see. <laughs> Nothing but the best for our prison. Hey, don't throw that. You... I threw the entire beaker of wine into the centurion's face. And before he could recover, I'd snatched the keys from his waist, run to the adjoining cell, and unlocked it. My eyes! My eyes! I, I, I... What do we do now, do you imagine? Yeah, will you run for it? This way. <laughs> No, 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 no. That is closed off. It, it must be. It must be the other way. I'm I, I, I Oh, by Jupiter, I'm lost. No, 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 I'm not. We can get out down this corridor. Are you yes. sure you know how to get out of this prison? You too. That passage leads nowhere. Oh, oh dear. I thought I was sure. Where do you think you're running, eh? If you want exercise, Marcus Rufus, you'll have to wait until later this afternoon. The lion will be very happy to give you a workout. Uh, now, back to yourselves, the two of you. March! Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't, don't worry, Marcus. I'm not giving up. After all, Senator Publius Cornelius was a guest in my house when all this happened. I have just got to find the right approach to him. He will listen to reason. All right, the two of you. In of yourselves. It's not going to be so pleasant anymore. Oh? 
It was pleasant before. You'll think so when I put leg irons on each of you. An hour later, I could hear Diamant being released from the house of the condemned. The centurion went back to his post. I wondered how much longer I had to live. Who is it? May I enter the house of the condemned? Who are you? All right, who are you? Why don't you answer, girl, when you're spoken to? What do you want? I must go to my master. I am Lydia, servant to Marcus Aurelius Rufus. Ah, oh, you can't see him. It's not permitted. But I have an important and most urgent message for him. Yeah, you look like a nice girl. Why do you work for a man like that? He's my master. I'm his slave. I uh, bought you, I suppose. Oh, I thank Venus for that. <laughs> and you're here to bring him a message. Well, I tell you right now, no. But why not? There's no harm in a message to one of the state's prisoners, is there? Until he becomes dinner for the lions, he's shackled in irons. Your Marcus Aurelius Rufus will try no more tricks. And I advise you to do the same. No tricks. Now, go on home like a nice girl. Centurion, I am telling the truth. I do have a message for you. All right, give it to me. Well, it's not written down. I must tell him myself. It will only take a few minutes. You don't seem to understand. No one is allowed to see the prisoner. Not that prisoner. You don't seem to understand, Centurion. I am not able to see my master. But I must tell him. Oh, you, 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 you cyclist? Since birth. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. Lydia. Lydia, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope it won't be difficult for you and your, uh, and your condition to find another master after the game this afternoon. He is innocent. Then no lion will touch him. So what have you got to fear? Lions and tigers are dumb beasts who shall not be entrusted with human lives. Oh, oh, oh. who tells you that, Lydia? Mistress Oriana, she is teaching me that the real world is not what we in Pompeii are taught. That man has much to know before he will know himself and the truth. Yeah, I believe I've heard about that woman, Oriana. Yeah, the free woman, the free thinker. However, Lydia, I live by the rules, and I value my life too much to disobey orders. Oh, please. Well, all right. Give me the message, and I promise I'll tell it to Marcus Rufus myself, word for word. Oh. Well, tell my master that his betrothed, Oriana, has had a change of heart. No longer does she believe he is guilty of killing her brother, and that within the hour... She personally will go to see Publius Cornelius, the senator, and beg him to spare Marcus's life. I think it's too late for that now. What do you mean? He is innocent, I tell you. You hear that, little girl? That's the lion. The very lion who'll decide whether Marcus Rufus is guilty or innocent. Those citizens of Pompeii were people, even as you and I, writes Sir Edward, author of the novel we are adapting. They lived under the shadow of uncertain death, even as you and I. They dealt with justice and injustice, and they dreamed there would always be a tomorrow, even as you and I. What kind of tomorrow, if any, is there in store for Marcus Rufus? We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Two. We must bear in mind we're tuning in on a civilization that crowded what is now Italy 1,900 years ago. Although man was advanced in many ways, he still placed his faith in many gods. The Christian belief that thou shalt not bear false witness was laughed at or disregarded. Traditional Roman religion was concerned with success, not sin. Don't you understand, Centurion? Someone is not telling the truth. What do you mean, someone? Oriana says someone is a false witness. 
and she will tell that to the senator. Young woman, I was that witness. I myself saw the bloody dagger in Marcus's hand, and Oriana's brother dead at his feet. You were deceived, she said. And our base is the high priest who actually saw the murder done. He was deceived also. <laughs> He was right there at the time. There was someone else who saw the murder. Who? A man I used to work for before I was bought from him by Marcus Rufus. Calvis, the tavern keeper. Oh, why hasn't he come forward? Well, I think he wants money. This morning he came to Oriana's house and said he had proof if Oriana would make it worth his while. Oh, his proof has a price. When she asked him how much, he said, you decide. And then? She said, I have decided. Get out of my house immediately. So he left. But he said he'd be back later. Later may be too late. Oh, I hope not. Oh, when do the condemned... Oh, I mean... In the late afternoon. After the gladiators come the prisoners of war and the last end of the arena are the condemned. You haven't much time. I must go. I'm charged with finding our bases, the high priest, and ask him to come and see Oriana urgently. Our bases, the principal accuser and witness? Oriana has known him for many years. She believes he may be able to help. <laughs> our bases? Uh, you are our bases, the high priest. I am. I, I speak with you, if he's not... Uh... Yet shared the pleasure, Master. My name is Calvus. I keep a tavern near the bay down by the docks. Uh, I wonder uh, what I have to say to you is such a private nature. Is there any uh, place we might talk? These men fashioning the new marble pillars, they're Egyptian workmen from Luxor. Oh. It's rebuilding the broken front of the temple. Ah, yes, from yesterday's earthquake. Yes, exactly. Uh, we can sit here and talk. They don't speak our language. What brings you here this morning, Calvus? Yeah, I know, as do many others in Pompeii, that you have a strong um, attachment, shall we say, for Oriana. But she is betrothed to an Athenian who in a very few hours, if all goes well in the arena, will no longer be a rival. Unless, of course, the lions leave him alone or... Marcus Rufus is proved innocent. Uh, I don't follow you. Don't you? You, of all people, must know Marcus Rufus is innocent of that murder. Explain yourself. I was there, Master, that night. I was in that grove by the Street of Tombs. I saw it all. I saw your dagger, Arbaces, pierce the heart of Epicides. You were alone? Oh, yes, was quite alone. Now, I think I should tell you that I went to see Oriana this morning. Uh, you're a man with a good business sense. Did you make her an offer to sell what you saw? She sent me away. Wouldn't hear me out. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you came to see me, Calvis. Now, if you don't mind, I had better look after my workmen. You come around next week sometime and we will talk gold. Uh... Before I go, honored sir, would you consider, wouldn't you like to give me something in advance before Marcus is thrown to the lions this afternoon? You couldn't wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow, you might forget. And in all probability, an innocent man will have paid for your crime. What price, Calvus? Hmm... I'll leave that to you. I've heard tell that you have a treasury of gold. Fabulous. As great as Nero's. So they say. Down there. Below the temple. Underground. Well, your silence should be rewarded. Lead the way, our bases. I'll be right at your heels. The temple is closed for repairs, young lady. Is our base is the high priest here? He was here a few minutes ago. Well, it's important that I find him. Well, have a look around. He couldn't have gone far. I saw him with a tavern keeper, you know, Calvus, the bald-headed. Calvus? You know him? I used to work in his tavern. I 
thought I'd seen you before. I'm the foreman on this job. Ah, uh, you'll excuse me, but you keep looking at me in such a peculiar way. Unfortunately, Master Foreman, I can't see you. I'm blind. No. Such a beautiful girl. What a tragedy. Oh, my life is no tragedy, believe me. Can you help me find our bases? Of course I will. I think he took the back stairway down to the galleries under the temple. Give me your hand, miss. I'll... I'll lead you down. Now, it's dark down here. I can hardly see a thing. Keep holding onto my hands. Perhaps I should be leading you. I'm used to the dark. No, no, he's got to be down here somewhere. Elvis, we turn right at the end of this passage. Is that him? Huh. Yeah, it's the high priest. Now, where did that voice come from? No one could ever find your gold, believe me. They spent days down here looking. That's Galvis. I recognize his voice. Well, I'd better go now. You just walk straight along. If he sees me, he'll be angry that I'm not up there working. Ah, so here we are. This door. Now, uh, Calvis, you take this lamp and hold it high so I can see the keyhole. So this is where the gold of the temple is kept. Uh, yes, you'll see for yourself. Uh, careful. Hold the lamp steady. Don't drip any oil or we could start a fire. Uh, I'll unlock the door. It's uh, strange. It won't open. Oh, of course, it's, it's been some time since I placed gold in the vault. Uh, uh, yeah, well, what is it? Uh, I feel faint. I hadn't realized how little air there there is down here. I can hardly breathe. Oh, my, my friend, gold doesn't need to breathe. Stand aside, I'll give it another try. <sighs> Oh, no, you go first. Go ahead. Uh, me? Yes, you may enter first and feast your eyes, Calvus. Uh, certainly, yes. Uh, uh, why are you pushing me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to fall. Don't, please! Uh, help! Help! Help me, he's... Why did you shut me up in the tomb? You wanted gold, you miserable tavern keeper. Go on, amuse yourself with it. Eat it. Drink it. Uh, Abbasis, are you mad? Let me out. Uh, this will teach you. You come to me with threats and demands for your silence. I, I didn't mean it. Please, please, let me out. I, I beg you. Go, scream, uh, scream if you wish. No one can hear you. I, I'm choking in here. Uh, Abbasis, master, please, I beg you, let me out. Goodbye, Calvis. I showed no mercy when you saw me dispose of Apicides. Why should I show any for you? Smother, starve, and die. Calvis? Huh? Who's there? Who's out there? It is I, Lydia. Who? What? Lydia. Remember? Lydia? Well, not the same blind girl who worked for me in my tavern. Yes, Calvis. The same Lydia whom you would whip when you felt like it? Uh, Lydia, uh, listen to me. I I didn't mean all that. I I always thought of you like a daughter. If Marcus Aurelius Rufus hadn't bought me from you, I would have run away. Marcus Rufus, exactly. Uh, I I want to save him. If you love your master, you, you'll want to save him too. From the lion? Yes, yes, exactly. But... You must hurry. Well, what is it you know that can save you? I know who really killed Oriana's brother. <gasps> Take that information to the senator. The senator, Publius Cornelius. The others are nobodies. Tell him to stop the gladiatorial games until I am free to reveal the truth. <sighs> that will save Marcus Rufus's life. Tell the senator I've been locked up here by the high priest. Locked up and, and left for dead. He, he wants me dead. Because I know the truth. Lydia? L Lydia, do you hear me? I... I don't know what to think. You're not going to leave me here. Go, quickly, and tell the senator I've been imprisoned here. And that as soon as I'm freed, I'll tell Publius Cornelius who the real murderer is. Not my master, Marcus Rufus. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I, I do mean that. Now, go... Before it's too late! Well, 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 who is this young lady? 
May I ask what you're doing down here? Don't you know this is consecrated ground? Are you Arbaces, the high priest? It is your voice. Indeed I am. My mistress, Ariana, has asked me to find you and for you to please see her as soon as you can. She said that. Oh, did she? Well, is that why you are here, little lady? Talking to yourself? I'm talking to Calvis. To who? Calvis. He's... Oh. He's... What? Behind that door. Oh, there is no one behind that door, child. Perhaps you're not... You're not feeling too well. Why do you say that? Of course Calvis is in there. I know his voice. Well, shall we see for ourselves? Here, I'll open it. Go inside. Go oh, have a look around. There's no one in there. Why are you pushing me through the door? Oh, please. Please, let, let go of me. Calvis. Calvis, come help me. I don't want to go in here. Oh, but you must. You little... Oh, Calvis, help! Marcus Rufus. You are to come with me. Four hours before noon, I was taken from my cell to one of the cages underneath the amphitheater. I still had not eaten or drunk. Sometimes, strange potions are given to the prisoners, and I was taking no chances. In a cage, next to mine, roared a very hungry lion. As was the custom, he had been starved to put him in the proper mood for an encounter in the arena. My only comfort was the blessed news from that dear blind Lydia that my beloved Oriana no longer doubted my innocence. I thought much about Oriana and wondered if I should ever see her again. <laughs> It was the national sport of those early centuries to throw gladiators, slaves, and criminals into an arena with wild beasts. Were the Romans more bloodthirsty than we today? Not if you can understand that human life 2,000 years ago did not have the value it has today. Today, bloodletting is an inhuman act. Yesterday, blood was the drink of the gods. I shall return shortly with Act 3. of the third of the last days of Pompeii. Let me set the scene. In the atrium of the House of the Marble Faun, a meeting of Oriana and Arbaces. As Bulwer Lytton describes the man, he is stately, with dark hair, dark robes flowing long and loose, arms outstretched, glittering eyes, fierce with a savage gladness, half prophet and half fiend. Oriana. It was good of you to come here, Arbaces, when you are so busy. Rebuilding the temple? Oriana, you forget how often and how happily I used to visit your house. But that is past. Are we not friends still? How can you ask? I would have been here sooner, but I only just learned that you needed me. Did you bring Lydia back here with you? Well, isn't she here? She left me at the temple an hour ago. No, no, I haven't seen her. It's not like her to dawdle on the road. Albaces, forgive me, but time is precious, and I must speak what's on my mind. At first, I mistrusted Marcus, but now I am convinced of his innocence. He did not kill my brother. But what makes you believe so? A dream I had last night. I was at Delphi in my dream, and the oracle spoke. Well, dreams seldom speak the truth. Dreams are the visions of the gods. Marcus is no murderer. Well, I wish for your sake that it were so, Ariana. But with my own eyes, I saw him, the bloody knife in his hand. You lie. It could not be. I wish it were not. I hate you, Arbaces, for saying so. Why did you send for me, Ariana? What can I do? Arbaces, use your powers, your influence. If you are able to set Marcus free, I promise you I shall never see him again. 
I have to know he is alive. I'll base I beg you. Believe me, if I could save Marcus, I would. Go now to Publius Cornelius and recant. You were the chief witness against him. Say you were mistaken. Anything. I'm helpless. It cannot be. The oracle has spoken. It is not Marcus who slew Apocides. Don't you understand? Marcus isn't capable of murder. He loved my brother. Yes, but he was not himself. Suddenly he ran from Diomed's house, shouting strange oaths like, like, like a madman. Well, couldn't you prevail upon the senator and insist that Marcus had lost his mind? He was no longer Marcus himself, but Marcus infected by the god Chaos. Oriana, if I could have Marcus freed, removed from the lion's den... If he made no appearance this afternoon at the gladiatorial game... Could you? I said if. Would you consent to be my wife? Your wife? Has it never crossed your mind that since you are a young girl, I have loved you deeply? Wife. My brother's blood unavenged. The man I love with all my heart. To be torn apart by a wild beast this very afternoon. And you? You ask marriage of me? Never. But why never? What had I to do with your brother's death except to have arrived too late to prevent the deed? Abasis, I swear to you on the altar of Isis, if Marcus should die this afternoon, I shall follow him in death. Oh, my dearest, you cannot. If ever you loved me, do not fail me. You have denounced Marcus. Go now and forswear that accusation. Or accept my blood as well as his on your hands. Marcus Rufus, are you ready? My pledge to Centurion doesn't seem to matter. The lion is ready. Uh, even though you're a condemned criminal, Rufus, Roman law is merciful. He doesn't, uh sound very merciful. When it's your turn to enter the amphitheater, you won't be pushed into the arena with nothing to defend yourself. Now, this dagger will be yours. Oh, thank you. Um, am I next? No, no, no. They have a half a dozen gladiators to watch before we get to the criminals and the Christians and the lions. When it's your turn, Rufus, I'll be back to tell you. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> has done it again. How many cistercia did you lose, dear man? Uh, ten, Senator, but frankly, my, my, my heart isn't in the games today. <laughs> what? Because of Marcus? Uh, oh, my dear, dear man, I am sorry about Marcus Rufus, but you, you mustn't let it spoil the day for you. And now, what? Something's wrong. There's a delay for some reason. Well, uh, how about some wine, eh, dear man? That'll perk you up. <laughs> I'll have it brought here to the Imperial Box. Uh, yes, 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 I, I suppose so. My dear man, Marcus Rufus may be your friend, but he killed a man. I can do nothing. <laughs> you there, slave. Some wine and two silver cups. Senator, you wished wine. I wished wine some time ago. You certainly took long enough. Offer a cup to my friend first. Oh, here, sir. A, a slave, slave. A, uh, haven't I seen you before? Your voice is familiar, sir. All right, all right. Pour the wine. Don't stand there. Take up the jug and pour. Go on, slave. Go. No, no, no. no. Let me pour it. Get out. Now, what in heaven's name are you doing? are you doing? You've spilled wine all over the floor. That is where I've seen her before. Ah, oh, yes, girl, at Calvis Wine Shop. Now, aren't you the slave Marcus Rufus purchased the day that we were there? Clean up this mess, do you hear me? Please, Senator, I meant no harm. It was only to catch your attention. How can you be so careless? Are you blind? Yes, Senator, the girl is blind. Senator, will you please read this note? Please read it. Uh, all right, all right, give it to me. What, 
What is this? I, I can't make head or tail of it. Where, where did you get this? Calvis, the wine merchant, my former master, and myself. We've been locked in a dungeon. I managed to find an opening too small for him to escape from, but he, he gave me this note and told me to find you at all costs. So I changed places with the slave who was to serve you. Dear Mad, read this. This is a note from that Calvus who claims that Marcus Rufus had no hand in the murder he's accused of. Hey, I knew it. I knew he was innocent. <laughs> You'll have to stop the games now. No, no, no. It's too late. Um, slave, you female. Yes, Senator? This, uh, Calvus who claims he knows the real murderer of Oriana's brother, uh, where is he? Locked up underneath the temple of Isis. Our basis, the high priest, forced us both into a vault. Did I hear my name mentioned? Uh, yes, our basis. There seems to be some question here. Uh, your face is familiar, slave girl. Do you have a sister? No, master. It was I, Lydia. Don't you know me? She says you locked her in a vault. <laughs> what nonsense. Uh, read this note, our basis. What is this? Is, th is this some kind of a joke? It's a serious accusation, our basis. Your word is questioned. Uh, Calvis writes that he's your prisoner and he swears Marcus is no murderer. Who is this Calvis? This note could very well be a forgery. Uh, you're not taking the word of a tavern keeper and slave girl against that of a high priest. Oh, who would bother to forge the seal of Calvus? For what reason? It's quite obvious that Diomed sets his friendship with this, this Athenian murderer above the law. Well, enough of this bickering or we'll have a riot on our hands. Centurion! Centurion! Oh, where is that fool? Yes, Publius Cornelius. Where were you? Centurion. Do not release Marcus Rufus from his cell until I give the word. So, our basis, you know nothing about people being imprisoned underneath your temple. Nothing. I know nothing about it. Here, take my keys, Centurion. Go to the temple. Try all the doors. If such a man is prisoner, bring him here. I have nothing to hide. Oriana. What brings you to the Imperial Box? I told you I would be here. With your kind permission, Senator. You shouldn't have come to the amphitheater. Madam, are you Oriana? Am I in time? I don't see my Marcus in the arena. How basis is it you? Have you been able to put a stop to this? Oriana, may I introduce myself? I am Diomed, an old friend of Marcus. It has been decided he is not going to grapple with the lion. Oh, great Zeus. Oh, who do I have to thank for this? I, madam. I ordered a delay in the proceedings. Oh, thank the God for that. Great Caesar, what is happening down there? It's Marcus. He is walking into the arena. Senator, you said he wouldn't be released. The centurion must have arrived down there too late. But, Madam Oriana, if Marcus Aurelius Rufus is innocent, he will not be harmed. You are an insane fool to believe that. Apollo, <laughs> help us. The lion has been let out of its cage. It's the... No, I, I, cannot, I cannot look. I don't think the lion has seen Marcus. Marcus is standing there, his arms folded. Small blade. Now the lion sees Marcus, but the lion backs away. It's turning now, circling the arena. How strange. Uh, t t tell me, tell me. The lion looks as though it were trying to run away. Get out of the arena. It tried to leap over the parapet between the arena and the first row. It's fallen back. It's crawling. Actually crawling close to the earth. This is madness. Wherever did they get such a cowardly beast? Oh, these games will be the laughing stock of the world. This is... What's happening now? The lion is creeping back to its own cage. I've never seen such a look on the face of an animal before. It was fear, 
I know animals. I've hunted wild boars and tigers, trapped lions and elephants. And that lion was frightened. Not of me. Of something somewhere in the air over Pompeii. A signal, perhaps, that only the native intelligence of the King of Beasts could understand. Today, with a greater knowledge of man and beast, we can comprehend what in those days only an animal could sense. Through the ages, we have learned that an animal can spot danger long before man. Instinctively, that lion wanted to hide but the people of Pompeii never once did they look over their shoulders at the smoldering Vesuvius. I shall return shortly. Edward Bulwer Lytton, the author of The Last Days of Pompeii, paints a broad canvas but with tiny detailed strokes. He balances the personal comedies and tragedies against the public drama about to unfold. When next we take to the airwaves, we shall be 24 hours before Pompeii disappears forever under an avalanche of volcanic ash and lava. I shall be here then and describe that scene for you. Our cast included Russell Horton, Ian Martin, Earl Hammond, and E.V. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now a preview of the fourth day in our special series, The Last Days of Pompeii. Danger, love, and death. You go back upstairs to the Imperial Box. Go up this way and around. It's safer than crossing the arena. Uh, I'll walk you along the arcade to the steps. There he lies in his cage, poor creature. <laughs> He's more frightened of me than I am of him. I don't think he likes you. Hmm. He likes me well enough to have spared my life. Didn't you, old boy? He, he, he's broken out of his cage. Oriana, don't, don't move. Now, stand where you are, behind the door where it swung open. Hey! Now inside his cage, quick! Oh. 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 Now what are we going to do? We're shut inside the lion's cage. And he's outside. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.